Hello, we thought we'd try dispersed camping near Menachee Meadows in the southern Sierra Nevada mountains in early July 2018 with our A-liner pop-up camper and try some 4x4 off-road driving for the very first time in our Toyota 4Runner. And here's what happened. Made it to the visitor center. I hear them rolling in the wall. Here's our watering hole for the night. We're close to Monachi Meadows, but boondocking out here in, on one of the forest roads nearby. And it's a wonderful evening. The temperature is great. It's like in the 70s and that road is really beautiful to go hiking down there. And the A-Liner did really well on these dirt roads here. They're really not the worst roads we've ever been on. Hardly any rocks and no ruts. We'll see how it goes here. Um, it's a big ATV, dirt bike, off-road vehicle area. Um, we'll see what happens here. Um, so far it's been very quiet. We've had one car drive by on the main road, which is, which is actually over here, way out there. So, we'll see. And we were told by the ranger that the bears haven't been a problem here. Um, we certainly hope so. We're cooking beef stroganoff tonight, so it does smell pretty good. Toward the wind Asking how to begin again If you're strange and I would love to So, how did it go last night? We had a pretty good night's sleep considering it was our first night at 8,900 foot altitude here. Um, you know how it goes, you get kind of headaches and your system kind of revs up when you move from low altitude to high altitude. Um, but it, it was pretty good considering, and there are two campgrounds you can stay in in this area. There's Troy Meadow and there's Fish Creek campgrounds if you prefer the campgrounds. Um, but we just love it here. This is, this is just perfect. We didn't hear anyone drive by. We, we heard no dogs. <laughs> All we heard were the birds. We didn't even hear any bears. We, we'd intended to put our trash in the car. Um, we're going to try to turn over a new leaf on the bear front and try to keep our trailer even cleaner. We already have the gray water down to a science. It's just soap and water in the gray water tank. And we're wiping out all the dishes, putting all the food material in a trash bag. And then we were gonna put that in the car, but we were just so tired, we forgot. <laughs> and we're having a little bit of an issue here with, though with solar. This isn't really a, you can see it's not really a, a real campsite. This was more of a, kind of a just a clearing elect next to this dirt road here um, and we're being careful not to trample the beautiful lupin 
that's everywhere around here. It's just, it's, it's just amazing. But there was enough room to turn around. That was the critical ingredient. So we're, we were just very happy to find this spot. We're gonna to try to make an effort to take it easy a little bit today because I'm suffering from a knee problem. Now here comes someone down the road. It's not very noisy, and um, we'll see if they come in here. They were nice, they just drove on by. <laughs> wow, the birds are going crazy here. This is definitely like, this is Sequoia National Forest. So last night was the first night we've ever been hot, <laughs> sleeping in the A-liner. Um, and it wasn't that hot outside. It was maybe around 50 something, but in the trailer it was around 70. And we had the fantastic fan vent open. We didn't want to turn on the fan just because we're trying to save electricity here. The solar situation doesn't look like it's very promising. There are a lot of clouds, a lot of trees. I'm, we'll see how it goes because we left our generator at home. But the only thing we can conclude is, well, besides the fact that maybe the panels in the walls had absorbed some heat from the 100 degree temperature we've been in the last five days at home, <laughs> um, it could be this refrigerator. Um, the only thing about the RV refrigerators is they do put off a lot of heat. But for now, this is working just great. And um, we're able to freeze ice cubes and move the ice back into our other two coolers to keep those cold. And that's been fantastic. I love, I love to have the ice for my, my knee. <laughs> so speaking of aches and pains, what, what have we been doing on these trips to help with the definite aches and pains that happen when you're in a new environment and you're in you know, cramped quarters in the A-liner? Um, even though we have the king-size bed, it's still, if you have, a, you know, at our age, it gets to be kind of confining in there. You can barely have two people walking by each other in the hallway. <laughs> um, we're, we're using this. This is great. This is basically a tennis ball, tennis ball with a sock around it, and then one of these ace bandages. I'll put a link to the ace bandage on Amazon, and you use that for self-massage on the spots that need a lot of point pressure to release those spots. And then we also have used this a lot, the Healthy Mode Life um, massage ball, which also does a different type of pressure and it feels really great. And we, all ha we have a blue foam roller that we cut in half and we also have a, a yoga mat and that's really been wonderful to go outside and stretch and just release things out in the, in, in the campsite. It, it is getting a tiny bit dirty, but you know, that's part of camping. <laughs> And I wanted to just mention for those of you that haven't done this before, self-massage, you can, you can just hold this in your hand and rub it on this, the area of your body that is sore. The most effective way in my experience has been to put this on the bed or on, against a wall and then lean against it and, rub, and go over the area that's, that's feeling really tight and sore. Part of this comes from the book called Trigger Point Therapy. Um, I think it is possible to go too crazy with that whole philosophy though, so you don't want to overdo it. Um, and I'm actually still trying to find that perfect level, but when we're feeling really stressed and tight and we you know, can't go back to sleep or whatever, this, these things really do help And stretching. My husband loves to do stretching. So we decided to do Monachi Meadows tomorrow. We're just too pooped today and we're going to do a nice lunch hike with our BLT sandwiches and already we heard an eagle cry. called Osa Meadows and here's the meadow out here with some it's like some dunes over there 
This is amazing. There are quite a few boondocking sites here with fire pits up here. It looks like the Forest Service is using a lot of these trucks are Forest Service trucks. Looking for a lunch spot. Nothing better than having a nice lunch place on a dissolving log and looking out at a gorgeous meadow. This is just so unusual to see a meadow like this and then on the other end of the meadow is this barren dune-like area. And I think Menachi Meadows also has some dunes. Well, getting cleaned up felt so good after that long hike. That was a really long hike for us. Um, I have to show you the lupins around here. It's, it's, just, a, it's just amazing. All these flowers are just within 100 yards of our campsite. Is one big dandelion. Apparently, some little creature around here really likes a certain type of Harbor Freight moving blanket. Only a certain type. Maybe it's the texture or the thickness. Anyway, uh, we have some definite little holes. Something's using our moving blanket to make a nest. But the black one, gee, there's, there's not one hole in the black one. Good morning. It's Wednesday. We are heading off to Menachi Meadows today. It's our first time doing an off-road 4x4 trail. Um, where we're going to rely on the map in the Back Roads of California book, which um, details some of the more popular 4x4 roads. It, it rates the road as easy, which is just perfect for us because we haven't even ever used four low or crawl control, anything like that. Uh, we'll see how easy it is. I think we're going to leave the trailer here because um, we're not sure. Uh, even though one person mentioned it would be fine to take it in there, um, we don't want to risk it today. It's just, um, you know, it's once you, if you can, you can easily get stuck. We always put a lock on the wheel, just a cable lock, and you know we just hope people are uh, going to be considerate, and we bring all of our valuables in the car with us. Here's the map. I don't know if you can see this. Here's the map, and again, no one drove down this road. It was great. It was quiet. It's been great. We haven't heard one motorcycle. Here's the sign for entrance into the Menachi 4x4 trail. I don't think the A-liner would have enjoyed these this are, part. Yeah, these are sharp rocks. These are so pretty sharp rocks. rocks a little bit. Do you think we should air down? Mm, I don't know. I think we've gone this far. Okay, so we're here at the staging area with a bunch of other people. Looks like some horse trailers. And we're airing down. We're gonna try 30. We hope that's good enough. More signs. Okay, we're aired down. We think we're on the right road. But just looking at this place, this one spot right here, I don't think the A-liner would have had fun with that. You know, if you're really determined, you could have done it. But you'd have to ha always have in mind that there's someone coming up behind you. So that adds a little bit of stress. Oh, it turns out that last spot was not the beginning. This is the beginning. See, we've already got those rocks to go over there. My husband's driving. He just said, I can't wait to see the hard part of the trail if this is the easy part. <laughs> we've gone 0.2 miles. This is an experience. Okay, so we're trying to decide whether we go to the right 
This might be the hardest part of the trail right here. The middle looks really bad. The far left is a possibility. But then there's a huge dip down there. I don't know. Okay, we've decided on our route and I'm gonna be the spotter. Hope we don't hit the bottom of the car. He's doing a great job for a first time, first timer. <laughs> I think we're mainly hitting our mud flaps in the back a couple times. S1. Okay, we're in four low S1, but we don't have any special lift or special tires. Well, we do have all all terrain tires, but wow, well, there are a few rocks down here. Are we going to go to the right or the left? Left. For sure. Oh, bad news. We didn't know this was here. Wow. I mean, there's no other way to go but down here. I'm, okay, I guess I'm going to be the spotter. Yeah, but don't fall, okay? It's okay. really, really slippery. That's the yep. Okay, well, we'll see if our car makes it down this hill. <laughs> um, it's, I guess, to some people, this would be nothing. Uh, to us, this is a pretty steep challenging hill, but we'll see. Hopefully our car can make it. Um, don't know if insurance covers this kind of damage. <laughs> I know. I hope there are no experienced four-wheel drive people with big Jeeps and big wheels and everything watching this video because to us this is really challenging. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's fun doing this? It's exhilarating. Exhilarating. I would say this might be our last time doing this, just judging how I feel right now. But I'm glad we tried it this once. I wouldn't say this was easy. I mean, what's hard then? Boy, I, I don't, I don't want to know. My husband says we might not do this again because we might not ever get back. So, indeed, what the book said was true. At 1.7 miles, that's when you really have to get out and look. I mean, there was a hard part before that, though. I mean, this whole stretch in here, I'm hoping it's easier down in the meadow. The gate. We're almost to the meadow. We're now in the Inyo National Forest. Oop, we're getting a little bit more than just a few sprinkles. And there's the sign, Inyo National Forest. We made it to the meadow. A few rocks still in the road though. Some happy looking cows over there. Hi, cows! Still kind of a rough road, though. Here's one of the many campsites. You can see the fire ring there. Uh, we're not spending the night though because we're just not prepared for it. There's an amazing garden of plants in here. Here's our lunch site. 
Sorry, I'm still eating my sandwich. It would be nice to come back here and camp sometime. we could stay longer. We had planned on camping with a tent. Maybe we'll come back someday and do that. No one is on the trail right now. We, we had our lunch. Um, we're, we're getting a little bit low on gas though. That's another issue coming into this area. There aren't, we were told there were no other gas stations, although we did see one that was charging five dollars a gallon, <laughs> but we're not sure if that was even, a legit, you know, open. So um, anyway, this is gorgeous. You know, in my opinion, I would never consider taking our trailer in here. I would just come in here for maybe a couple nights. That would make it wonderful because you could you could really spend some time exploring this area, and it's really really huge. Like there's there's fishing, there's golden trout. Oh, uh, I, I guess we're not going to do it though. We're just not set up for it today. We decided to drive a little farther over to the horse corrals, which wasn't that far from where we have our lunch. Big rock in my next front time. Okay, big rock. This is how fast we're going up the hill to leave Monachi Meadows. What are we going? It's maybe one mile an hour right here. Better safe than sorry. What's the greatest is going back up this trail. We thought we would run into someone coming back down. So far we haven't hit anyone. In our inexperienced view, so far it seems like it's a lot easier going back up the hill than coming down the hill. <laughs> and we know, maybe it's because we know what we're in for this time. faster if you've been walking. Now we get to fill up again. But you know, if we hadn't tried this, we wouldn't have seen Monachi Meadows, which was really beautiful. Okay, we're back at the A-liner and it's raining now. Um, we did not anticipate rain. It was 100 degrees at home for five days. So we left our stuff out, of course. Now it's all wet, but we also have a new leak in the A-liner. Um, it's this dormer. Water's gushing down. Water's gushing down here and getting in right here. Gorilla tape to the rescue. Here's another way we managed to fix a leak with Gorilla tape was this leak we had going on inside the A-liner door. Basically all the water, nothing stops the water, the rainwater here. It all is stopped by this edging. And then there was this gap here water was just getting under here and then draining down on this hinge and leaking down inside the trailer. Anyway, this has worked great so far because when we fold the, the, the wall down, it's just doubled over here but it's sticking here on the top edge. Fold the wall down and it, it stays on there and then when you fold the wall up it's just hanging over so the water drains over it. So thanks for watching. We're heading off tomorrow to some more spots in the Eastern Sierras. We decided to move campsites for one night just to get some more solar. And actually we did get some, but it's raining now. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and tune in to our next spot. <laughs>